All right, milk. It does the body good. We've heard about that for many, many years, but it's more than just calcium and phosphorus in our diet for strong teeth and bones. We got protein, eight grams in an eight ounce glass of milk, and it's cheap, 25 cents. You can't beat it, especially if you are working on a budget. And so we can have our young man who's jumping and he can grow big and strong like the rock. But where does milk come from? It comes from, when I talk to a little girl, it comes from the store. I'm like, well, where does the store get it? Another store. <laughs> so, okay. Well, eventually, sweetie, it comes from a cow who lives on a farm, and it may be a small farm where I grew up, or it may be a large dairy farm, which is okay, because on large dairy farms, they can specialize, and they can focus their attention. And these large dairy farms and our small dairy farms, 97% of them family-owned and operated. And they grow because sons and daughters, brothers, sisters, want to continue in that operation. And so they need to grow so everybody can live off that dairy. But on that dairy farm, milk quality has a huge impact, not just on our dairy cows, I say in terms of their welfare, but our product that we produce, the cheese, ice cream, pizza for our cheese, cheese pizza, and I say a good old gold cold glass of milk. And so our farmers are really tied into that. Now these, these look like happy cows, right? Out on pasture, chewing grass, kind of moseying around. But what happens if it's like this summer where we had 90 degree days, the sun's blazing down, or the alternative, when the milk's rain, or the, yeah, the milk, this rain coming down like cats and dogs in that place, not so comfy. And so to make them more happy and more comfortable on those types of days, putting them into these facilities where they have fans that are blowing on them. They have the misters and streamers like you get when you're at the, the amusement parks. Nice, comfy, sandy beds that they can lay in. The cows actually choose to go inside where it's comfy and comfortable. And we like our happy, comfortable cows because when we pick them into the parlor where we harvest our milk, if they're clean, they're comfortable, they're dry, that makes our job easier to harvest a high quality product because the teats are clean and we can go through our process a lot easier. And to do that, to harvest high quality milk, we are checking for signs of infection. We are putting a antimicrobial compound on those teat ends, cleaning them really good like you go to the doctor when you get a shot. Same process, to clean those teat ends, wipe that off, harvest the milk, and when they're done, we apply that same antimicrobial agent to kill bacteria on the surface, keep that cow healthy. And after we harvest the milk, every single tanker load of milk is tested for quality. That includes antibiotics. 99.98% loads of milk transported were antibiotic free last year. And that is high quality product. We also test for bacteria and let's say immune function and cells. But the problem is, I say when you harvest milk, I say whether it's naturally like cows, a nursing baby, foals, dogs and cats, one out of three is gonna develop an infection. And that's just a natural part of the process. And that infection is mastitis. And that's one of the areas that I delve into is trying to keep our cows happy and healthy, minimizing the risk of infection of the mammary gland or mastitis so she doesn't develop into that sick cow that doesn't produce a high quality product and interferes with her welfare. So several projects that we do here at the university, we're tied into the Southeast Quality Milk Initiative. We're working with five other institutions in the Southeast looking at ways to help dairy producers identify their, um, let's say, financial issues, resource issues, attitudes, management practices that help them produce a high quality product here in the Southeast. And genetics, we like that super cow. We want high quality cows that produce a high quality product. They resist infection easily and we do it through DNA. We look at the entire sequence, identify those small changes that make her that super cow through those, those individual changes. And we use that other ways. We use genome-wide association studies to go in and figure out what specific genes are changed or altered to figure out what makes her more resistant two different types of bacteria, a stronger or weaker immune response that may be developing as part of that process. And the part I really get into is the next step. So we identify that gene, we identify that protein. What does it do? Once we figure that out, we can develop new immune-based therapies to prevent infection or to go in and 
uh, treat that cow rather than using antibiotics. And so that's the part that we really, I get into. And that looks at all aspects. We look at the bugs that cause infection. We look at antibodies that help prevent the cell types, let's say our T cells and our B cells, and neutrophils. They're the ones that are the first responders. They come in and really um, fight off that first wave of infection that's in place. But more recently, I say something we never thought we'd get into, but how many people here didn't get a lot of sleep last night upgrading papers or exams or writing a grant? Yeah. And we all know when you don't get enough sleep, your immune system doesn't work as well. So good quality sleep, better immune system, better health, and you can manage stress better. Problem is, we really don't know much about dairy cows and how they sleep. So you can see her, so nose is twitching, eyes are twitching. We don't know how much sleep she needs and how does our management influence her ability to sleep. So we're working with Kentucky and Ohio State to develop a Fitbit like tracker so we can track and monitor her sleep to get a more sensitive indicator of how she's responding. And it just adds tools to our arsenal. We have the ability to check for mastitis using thermography. We have real-time sensors for temperature, looking at the pH in her stomach, and we activity monitors. We use that to help us identify cows that may not be happy and healthy. But I couldn't finish without all my students, and these are just a sparkling, because I really do enjoy getting students engaged and interested in the dairy industry, because so many people don't have that knowledge and background. And so getting them interested, engaged, and being stewards of the industry and moving into that industry has been a great opportunity.